Hi, yeah. this is an interesting device I thought it was worth having a look at. It's a travelling wave tube amplifier. Uh, this is designed to amplify in the microwave region. The travelling wave tube uh, doesn't work in the way of transistors and things. It actually uses uh, uh, basically a linear accelerator or, or a cathode ray to do the amplification. So we're going to have a look and see what's actually inside. These are the waveguides uh, in and out. So uh, it doesn't create the uh, actual wavelength what it is taking. It takes in uh, a weak signal and produces a larger signal. So it can actually be used as a transmitter or a receiver. As uh, travelling wave tubes go, this is quite a small device. It's also quite low power. It's uh, only one watt output. It, its midpoint is nine gigahertz, and it's and the anode part is only running at two point seven kV. Um, the way that it's constructed is there's an electron gun inside here, and that there's a beam then will travel up through a tube here. And this point is where the anode is on the on the, the tube itself. So we can have a little look inside. Um, if we take parts off, I've undone all the screws already. This is our heatsink on our anode, and if I take this part off, You can see there's actually a, a center tube in here which is actually a lot of magnets along here. The function of the magnets is to keep the beam uh, collimated in. Our electron gun assembly is in this end of the tube in here and I have actually taken the, the whole tube out of here already. So unfortunately taking the actual electron tube out of this it, it kind of broke, they, they tend to be potted in with silicon and the likes like this one so it wasn't easy to remove um, but basically it, it sits inside, like inside this tube that way and this is the electron gun assembly here and we have a, a long tube here with a, a helix inside it and this is the target anode at this end. You can see this was never really intended to be serviceable uh, to the point there's not even a socket fitted onto the actual uh, travelling wave tube itself here. You can see where this heat sink was attached to the, the anode here because the um, impact of the electrons here would be would generate some heat. The voltage is only 2.7 kV, um, so it wouldn't produce X-rays. But uh, the uh, traveling waveguides running at 50 uh, kil uh, kilovolts and the likes will produce X-rays as well. As the construction is, that you can actually see these two waveguides come in and sit roughly about here on the um, this little X uh, tube here. Um, this is a, a graphite coating, and I'm not sure it might be for attenuation. So the way it seems to be arranged that this works is you've got your electron beam travelling across here uh, under the, the field from the anode cathode. You have your wave uh, coming in and, and coupling onto this helix here. Uh, the wave uh, obviously travelling faster than the electrons but it's slowed down with this helical coil here uh, and therefore influenced by the electrons travelling across here to amplify it. So have a little look, closer look at the uh, sample this. Uh, so if we dis disconnect or take away the glass outer casing here, you can see the little supports and the helical coil in there. That is very fine. So it's our anode end there, and this is our coil here. And our electron gun assembly is in here. So a very similar electron gun to a cathode ray tube. So you can can see that the this material here, which can sometimes be beryllium ber beryllium oxide, uh, it, it tends to be a lot whiter. I don't think this is this be just ceramic. This is something I suspect is maybe beryllium oxide as a heat sink, and. Uh, 
that is, is different, so I don't think there's a risk on this. This little thing here, I think, is attenuation for the for the actual waveguide itself, or the, the, the amplified beam, because you'll get reflections, and this is an absorber to stop reflections coming back down to the input part of the um, waveguide. You can just make out the, the helix spring in there. There are a little few connections in here that are worth looking at. Um, if I trace these through, there, there is actually a connection to the, um, the helix, the coil here, um, which does go down onto one of the pins here. And there's also another connection to this point here. So there may be some focusing arrangement being done to the beam before it actually exits the, the gun at this point. Um, this is also interesting here. There's a little. This is the the getter for the for conditioning the vacuum here, and um, it actually looks rather. Non normally these are inductively uh, fired, but this one actually looks like it's physically connected in a loop with the two connections that could uh, fire it just by passing a current through it. Okay, and just finally, I'd say pointed out these magnets here. If we take the anode end apart, so this is actually the connection to the anode, and uh, it's connected to the chassis. Um, interesting enough, this is the waveguide guides out. So the uh, the travelling wave tube sits inside here, and uh, and it goes through the centre of that. And these are obviously shielding connections, and the rest of the magnets are are all in, in here as well. Finally, one last point. Uh, for obviously, for setting up these, you can adjust the tension on the actual magnet column. There's adjustments here, and there's also a, a screw here, so you can obviously bend this to focus the beam. And another thing that I came across, if you can make it out in focus, it is this. There's a little little magnet, there's like a little shunt on top here, so there's obviously some fine-tune adjustment by placing uh, magnets along here too. I okay, thought we found that quite interesting.